I got this comment recently from someone. I'm guessing he was in his 20s, and he said, Why would God allow my six-year-old sister to die of horrible cancer? And then he said, And don't tell me God's just going to make the best of it. He was being honest, and he was devastated and angry, but I could tell he still wanted to believe, and it was causing conflict. Not an easy one to respond to, and probably one of the hardest questions our faith is ever going to face. I think all of us are going to get to the point someday when we're just going to look around and see all the war and disease and poverty and suffering and evil. And we're just going to say, where are you, God? How could you let these things happen? Or maybe, how could you let this thing happen to me? And we're told over and over how this is some God of love who loves us like we're his children and he's all good and all powerful and can do all things. And we'll just wonder, then why doesn't he do anything about it? Why doesn't he intervene? I wouldn't let these things happen to my children if I had the power to stop it. And we're left with this idea that if there is a God, and that's a very big if, he's either some cruel and sadistic God looking down on us like that mean child looks down on the worms roasting on the sidewalk, or else he's a weak God, powerless, impotent, unable to do anything about it even if he chose. Or, probably the worst one of all, we think he's just a cold and heartless God who really doesn't care about you or me or anyone else. And for some of us, we'd just lock this up and bury it down and keep jumping through our religious hoops, even though deep beneath the surface, it really bothers us. And for others, it makes us angry, rebellious, even hateful. We'll turn our backs and walk away saying, I don't want anything to do with this God anyway. Either way, faith is lost. The truth is, there really is no good answer to what we call the problem of evil. Simply because there is no answer, it's an unanswerable question. Sure, I could illustrate out in very clever ways what all the greatest minds have said about it, but they knew they were treading into deep waters far beyond our comprehension. And you and I know that all the clever arguments in the world aren't really going to cut it for that family who just buried their six-year-old or the woman brutalized, or the millions starving to death every day. Even C.S. Lewis himself, who crafted some of the most convincing arguments on the problem of evil, when faced with the loss of the love of his life, wrote, it all seems like some kind of vile practical joke. And when the need is desperate, we go to God and find the door slammed in our face, and the sound of bolting and double bolts from the inside. And then silence. I'm sure that probably connects somewhere with all of us. But for me, the only satisfactory answer I've ever heard on this question comes from God himself. When asked by some poor soul in the Bible who was really suffering. His name was Job. I'm sure you've heard of him. And there was no other like him on the face of the earth. Faultless, upright, innocent. And those are God's words, not mine. And he had everything, a loving family, more wealth and prosperity than any other man in the East, and the love and esteem of all his people. And then one day, he lost everything. His family, his children, his loved ones, dead. His herdsmen, his wealth, his livelihood, destroyed. And he himself was struck with a disease so disgusting that his friends could not even raise their eyes to him because they couldn't even recognize him. And he would just lay there in the ashes, scraping himself with the broken shards of his life, wondering, why God? My sighs have become my food, he said. My tears pour like flowing streams. I'm filled with restlessness until the dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and scabs. My skin cracks and festers. My days come to an end with no hope. I shall never see happiness again. 
And sure, his friends came by with all the clever arguments in the world, but they didn't satisfy him. And that conflict and rebellion grew inside him until finally he lashed out at God and said, How could you let this happen to me? I'm innocent. I did nothing wrong. I did everything right. Explain yourself to me. God's response came through a storm. Who is this? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Have you commanded the morning since the days began? Have the gates of death been revealed to you? Do you have the wisdom to command the entire universe? and the power to operate it? Who is this who questions without knowledge? He never answered the question. He only answered with a series of unanswerable questions, as if to say, don't worry, I got this. The man could only lay his hand over his mouth and learn to trust in the one who knows. And so will I. Evil is not some question to be answered or some riddle to be solved. Asking why only leads to... It's something to be overcome. When Jesus came down here and placed himself right in the midst of all our war and disease and suffering and evil, what did he do? He didn't just snap his fingers and make it all go away. He didn't yell and scream in anger, and he certainly wasn't afraid. And God didn't even spare his own son from it. He could have. Instead, he bore it. Literally all of it. He suffered it. Patiently. And he crushed it. Permanently. And he looks at you and me dead in the eyes and says, Come on, now let's do this together. I'll show you. He doesn't give us an answer. He gives us himself. There's a scene from Dostoevsky's book, The Brothers Karamanov, that's etched in my brain. In it is the Grand Inquisitor, evil incarnate, and he's blaming his prisoner, Christ, for all the evil in the world. You got it wrong, he accuses. You gave them freedom, but they're too weak to bear the responsibility of it. Too weak to find salvation. They don't want freedom, they want security. Without it, there'd be no suffering, no war. No hunger, no slavery, no death. Because of you, millions are lost. Because of you, millions will suffer. Because of you, millions will die. The prisoner's response, and these are his lines, not mine. When the Inquisitor ceased speaking, he waited some time for his prisoner to answer him. His silence weighed down upon him. He saw that the prisoner had listened intently all the time, looking gently in his face and evidently not wishing to reply. The old man longed for him to say something, however bitter and terrible. But he suddenly approached the old man in silence and softly kissed him on his bloodless, aged lips. That was all his answer. The old man shuddered, his lips moved. He went to the door, opened it, and said to him, Go, come no more, come not at all, never, never. And he led him out into the dark alleys of the town. What was Christ's response to evil? No words, no anger, no fear, just... What was evil's response? So I don't think the question is, why does God let bad things happen? We can never know the answer to this, but 
I'm perfectly okay trusting in the one who does. But I think the better question is, what's my response? How do I respond to all the evil I see? Do I kick and scream, cursing the darkness? Or do I go out there and light a candle, a fire? How do I respond to the evil that touches my friends, my family, my neighbor? Do I blame the entire universe? Or do I just show up and sit there, gently, and bear it with them? How do I respond to the evil that invades my mind and tortures my soul? Do I fight to overcome the problem of evil? Or is the problem of evil me? Terrible things are going to happen. We can't control that. But we can choose how we respond to it. Do I let it overcome me? Or do I overcome it? Do I respond just with more evil? Or my love? In the midst of the evil. It's one of the hardest things we'll ever do. And I don't think we can do it alone. But that's okay. Because we have a very powerful friend. Who's already gotten through exactly what it is you're going through. And he looks at you gently. With all the love and strength in the universe. And says, okay, come on. Now let's do this together. 